Today we're going to be talking about six ways that you can help support your children if they're spiritually gifted. If this interests you, stick around and let's get into it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Veronica and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. If this is your first time here, welcome. It's nice to meet you. I teach people about easy, practical spirituality and intentional living. I talk about all of the esoteric and metaphysical stuff that you could imagine. So if this is something that interests you, hit the subscribe button below because I wouldn't want you to miss out on anything good. She's got good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, babe. You're welcome. Today I'm here with my daughter, Anella. Hello. And we're going to be talking about six different ways that you can support your spiritually gifted children. Maybe they're clairvoyant or clairaudient. Maybe they just have crazy good intuition and are claircognizant. We know what a challenge that can be, especially if this is all new to you. Like, oh, yeah. I had no mentor. I knew nothing when I found out that my daughters had these gifts. And it was so hard to navigate. And I don't know that I did it very well all the time. So, especially now that she is a mother and has two daughters, we are here to help you try to figure this out. And this is a big, big topic. So we're thinking about making this into a series. So if you have any questions that you want us to answer, or you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. We would really appreciate it. Or feel free to message me and I will add it to the list. Also, if you know anybody who could use this information, please feel free to forward this video to them if you think that it would help them. So before we get started with this and dive in, why don't we take a few minutes to let Anella introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her journey as a child who had spiritual gifts and now as an adult who has these gifts and how she's navigated that, especially now that, like I said, she is a mother with two little ones that are also gifted. So she's having to figure out that aspect of it as well. So everybody welcome my daughter Anella. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey and your gifts and all the things. Okay, um, well let's see. I always had a knowing, I guess you could say, from the time I was little that I was different. Like I would have extremely weird dreams. Um, I was so drawn to ghosts and like, I mean, we all were like, mm -hmm. honestly, our whole family was just like this little group of just spiritually gifted people and empaths and stuff like, but we didn't know what that no, we didn't know we what no label idea. that was. We didn't know how to articulate it. We didn't know that we knew none of it. And it was, <laughs> we were just drawn to it sometimes, but we've always been so gifted and so different. And I would feel things, I would sense them, and then it really came to a head when I was a teenager. I was struggling with a lot of mental health things, which now I can completely recognize as being influenced by entities and such. Like, that's that's its whole own thing as well. Um, and I was 16, which is actually an initiation phase, initiation stage age, whatever you want to call it, for um, a lot of people who are gifted. And I was outside my home with one of my friends, and he had mentioned, do I ever realize that lights flicker around me? And I was like, what? <laughs> no, what are you talking about? And he was like, well, I have. And like, even as I like that street light right there behind you keeps flickering on and off. And he was also spiritually open, and he said, that's my guardian, Paris, which is a weird coincidence to something that happened years before that all I can remember was the word Paris. Um, and so that just kind of, like, flew open a door, and I noticed I started really seeing entities and ghosts and spirits and everything. Like, it just, it was like a whole tsunami wave, just like crashed upon me and um I had no idea what to do about it or anything at all like I had always seen stuff um as a little kid like eight years old um I remember like the first big thing it woke me up in the middle of the night actually 
Um, and then when we had gone to Arizona, her and Paul had gone My on then like a boyfriend. date. My then-boyfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they were on a date, and they were going grocery shopping, and I was grounded. <laughs> so I had to stay home. I was home alone, and um, I had to do my chores. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll go wash the dishes so that way they're done when mom gets home. And I was really scared. Like, it just felt like our whole house. Like, I was not alone. I was not alone, but in a bad way. And I was 13. Yeah, it was like 8th grade. I was 13. So I turned on the radio. Um, So just because music helps us feel not so alone sometimes when there's sound, like people turn on TVs, background noise. Um, So I did that. That made it even more mad, and I was standing at the sink washing dishes, and out of nowhere, I could see it. It was like this black mass that was like a tube almost, like like that big in size, like snaking around our ceiling, and it zoomed into the kitchen and shoved me. Like it like went through me and shoved me up into the counter, and I just dropped. I dropped to the ground. I just dropped it. Just started screaming and crying. It was like, ah! <laughs> yeah. I was telling them a little bit about this and a few other videos about how, like, that was the catalyst that kicked everything off for all of us. Yeah, it was, it was because scary. although you get you went way m- deeper into it later, you know, in mm-hmm. a couple of years, like that was when you came to me and said, like, this thing is here. And it's getting aggressive with me, and it shoved me. And I was just like, oh, no, we're about to kick some spirit ass. Yeah. Like, get away from my kids. And, like, that kicked every single thing off. Yeah, it would, like, ping pong back and forth between tormenting me and Emmy. And Emmy was younger. Amelia, sorry if you're watching this. It's just natural. <laughs> She's okay. <laughs> um, She would wake up in the middle of the night, every single night, and turn on all the lights in the house because she was just scared like and it would move closet doors it gave me such horrible gory nightmares i started sleeping with a knife under my pillow because i was so scared and i had no idea about any of this like as you, when you told me this as an adult it breaks my heart it like, was so scary <laughs> my mama's heart just like <laughs> I felt so bad, like, that you were so scared, which is why it's important for us to do these kind of videos so that people know how to help their little ones, right? Yes. So with all that being said, you know, it took a couple years to start ramping up for you, but you had gone on some other journeys, but you realized that, what, you have clairvoyance and clairaudience, you have all of them, right? Yeah, I, um, I would say my strongest one is clairvoyance but that it encompasses everything like yeah. it, the audience the knowing the feeling yeah. like like I have all of them too but my main one is clairsentience my clairvoyance and clairaudience are mild where yours are like pfft. yeah like I um I get visions I very intense visions um I just know things that happen my dreams come true like I yeah I'm just yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of everything, yeah. and I'm I'm figuring it out because I have no other choice. But to... it's like in those the TikTok videos. I don't know if you've seen them or not, but where they're they're like showing like a normal scene or what would be normal, and then they're like, and now add a little bit of spice, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's you. <laughs> My children have been another main catalyst that have forced me, just like with my mom, but um, with me, it's a little bit different because Freya started exhibiting signs of being clairvoyant at a month um, old yeah. <laughs> oh immediately gosh. and I still was so young like I I had her when I was 18 and I didn't know what I was doing like I just started learning about you know, chakras you did too though I remember really? Yeah, and I know we do not like to talk about her father here on this t- channel this is not a topic we're ever gonna address but when you were around five or six months old, mm-hmm. he we were at his parents' house, and over their fireplace, they had a big deer head mounted, and he was saying, um, he had leaned over to me, and he's like, there's something up there over that deer head watching us. 
And just a few minutes later, he had her on his lap, and she was a tiny baby. And, like, she looked up there, and she kept, like, pointing at it. And he's like, see, told you she's seeing the same things I'm seeing. That's, like, exactly what happened with Frey. Like, yeah. we were at um, her father's aunt's house, which is a, it, I, it's a portal. Like, it is, like, a huge <laughs> yeah. farmhouse. Call a spade a spade. A hundred acres from the 1800s. In the middle of West Virginia, it is haunted. Haunted. There's a lot of history on that land. A lot of blood, a lot of history. Oh, West Virginia in and of itself, the whole state is just haunted. Yeah, it's beautiful, so, but there's a lot there. Yeah. Um, and it was like every single night at 2 in the morning, her house would come alive. And I, okay, I'm very skeptical. Like, I am what I am, but at the same time, I'm skeptical. So I don't typically share a lot mm -hmm. of what I feel, what I see, yeah, what I same. hear with other people because I don't, I want to know, I want to be validated by other people's senses, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. I don't it want does. to say something and then everyone else go, yeah, that's totally here because then it's like, but is it really or are you just agreeing with me? <laughs> like, because I don't know, like I just, yeah, yeah I so get I kind of just sit back feel what I feel, observe what I observe, everything, and then when someone else is like, yeah, I'm like, there, yep. Yep, I agree. <laughs> um, so I remember Frey Frey woke up. It was like 2 in the morning. She's, I'm holding her in my lap, and I see this little ball, this little white ball, going everywhere across the ceiling. I could feel it. I could see it. Freya's eyes, like kind of like... Started with, tracking yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, they, she just started following it everywhere, and I was like, she sees what I'm seeing, too. Yeah. And it just snowballed from there. I can remember when she was like a year old, maybe two, but I don't even know if she was two yet. She was just learning to talk and like I would FaceTime with her and she'd point at your front door to the window and she'd be like, Mimi, see that man? The man scare me. And I'd be like, no, honey, Mimi doesn't see that man. She's like, Mimi, the man scare me. And like she, bad. yeah, she was seeing ghosts. Yeah. So that has pre presented a unique challenge for you, because now you don't just have to worry about figuring out your gifts and your energy and your journey. You have to figure out how to help these little ones. What I think has benefited you, whether it felt like it or not at the time, but what's benefited you and me is having gone through the path and the journey that we went through. Mm -hmm. And you now know it really would have helped me if my mom knew to do this. Or that oh, would yeah. have helped me so much had I known that. Or had I been encouraged to do this or that. Because keep in mind at the time, I was still very, very much entrenched in that fundamentalist Christian mindset. And see, on top of that, mm -hmm. she is extremely empathic. Like, she, all, like, so much of the energy that surrounded us was just, like, cycling between mm -hmm. us and while she doesn't give herself very much credit her strength and everything that she has was really mm -hmm. one of the strongholds and um yeah she you make me cry well it's the truth that was a really long intro we're sorry if we like talk jaw's ears off but you know how fun getting to know us right and yep. Share in the comments below if you guys have had any experiences like this. Definitely. Were you a child with gifts? What would have helped you? Because we're going to do more of these. Yeah. So if you have things to add when we're done with this list, let us know. Do you have little ones that have gifts? Let us know what has helped you if we missed something here, okay? Mm -hmm. Number one. First and foremost, you want to make your little one feel heard. You want to let them know that you believe them. You want to listen to them. You want to listen to the experiences they have, the things they see. You want to give them not only an outlet to get those things out, but you want to let them know that what they're experiencing is valid and that you believe them, right? Yeah, definitely. Like that was one... One of the most unsettling things for me would be when I'm feeling something, I'm seeing something, and then Freya would come out of nowhere and tell me the same exact thing. And, um, like, with my mom, when she says it just, like, shifts her into mother bear mode, does the same thing for me because, like, these things, sometimes they're not nice. Mm -mm. They are not nice at all, and they can influence your little kid's in so many ways and they can scare them and if you don't quite understand like what's going on and you just kind of like shove it off like that gives 
the invalidation can really like screw up the foundation Mm -hmm. of their gifts and what they're able to do with them and how they develop and it can just makes them feel vulnerable it makes them feel like um I don't know I think I feel the energy of it feels like it just lowers their vibes and makes them sad and makes them feel invalidated and that just gives a foothold for like tricksters to get in don't you think that's exactly what I was gonna say (laughs) you see that yeah yeah that's definitely um like there would be times where Freya would wake up in the middle of the night and she'd come into my bedroom and be like mommy I feel this and uh, there was this little genie thing that um it was like floating and it had this weird shape to it and it was like almost like a mummy like it was like wrapped in different colored cloths and Freya would sit there and be like that thing comes into my dreams a lot and I'd be like mm. what <laughs> that the thing right there and she'd be like yeah like and kids say the weirdest things mm-hmm. like they come up with the most outlandish stuff sometimes However, there's truth to some of it. Yeah, there's a kernel of truth. And the thing is that even if that particular moment or thing that they're saying isn't real, if you listen to them and validate them and make them feel safe to tell you anything, maybe they're testing the waters. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, If you make them feel safe to talk to you. They got to trust you. They're going to trust you so that when it does matter, they're going to tell you that too. Yeah. Yeah. First and foremost, like, they're probably remembering certain things that we don't quite understand because kids are so, like, they say uh, old people and babies yeah. are, like, the most spiritually open. Mm-hmm. And even if you are gifted yourself, and... They okay, still may see all, all kinds of stuff you don't. Exactly. Or know stuff. And so many more people out there actually have these kinds of gifts but they're just like us and they don't know it. So when you're a kid, like you got generations are changing completely. And yeah. the whole new generations Those that little are star coming seeds in, that are coming yes, in. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are going to be different. They are going to say things that we don't really know if it's true <laughs> right. or not. However, like we have to give them the courage and the confidence to yeah. believe in themselves and to know what they're seeing. That way they mm-hmm. can change the world. Number two. You want to focus on the light, right? Definitely. A big thing we've been doing recently is teaching her about her angels Mm -hmm. and how angels are always surrounding our home. They are always protecting us. And that, that. yeah, it's, well, see, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's (laughs) something she did when we were little kids. And like, she would pray with us every night before we went to bed. And I remember being like, our angels are here. And I'd like hug the wall and be like, good night, angel. Because <laughs> um, it was so cool to me. And Freya, we, there's been a lot. It's been a rough time recently. And um, her being so open, she's been kind of scared. So we've just been focusing on the light and teaching her that she's always stronger. Mm-hmm. Like little kids need to know that they are stronger they are bigger. Nothing can hurt them. They have the light of the universe within them. Yeah. They they can overcome anything. And that they don't have to be afraid. That these things, they may try to come and spook you. However, you're in control. And yeah. they have the power. They All they have to do is just say, be gone. And call upon their angels. Call upon God. Like, amen, amen, amen. I love that. Yeah. That's like a childlike version of what I always teach about how you are a sovereign being. You are a sovereign being with free will. And there is nothing that can come into your space or mess with you without your permission. And it needs to be gone. Yeah. This is hallowed ground. This is my space. Yep. The angels have set a hedge of protection around it. Be gone. So I love that you're teaching them that. Yes, and as a parent or a guardian, an aunt, grandparent, whoever you are to the little spiritually gifted kid in your life, one of the best things that you can do is form a relationship with the archangels Mm -hmm. because the archangels are my spiritual peeps. Like they are the, (laughs) they're my homies. They are the group of angels that have just always been there for me. 
They've always had my back. They've always protected me. Like, even before I knew anything, it was them. It was mm-hmm. them. Same. And, um, Same. like, Metatron is a big one for both of us. Yeah. Big guns. Um, yep. And see, that's funny <laughs> because there's just, there's a lot of things that we've discovered together that are mm-hmm. in sync with each other. Mm-hmm. And um, Metatron, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel are, mm-hmm. they're like my little, my little four that... I call upon all the time. There's and there's the so many squad. out there. Yeah, <laughs> like you figure out who protects you the most. All you have to do is research on them. Which we can even make a video about archangels. I have. You, oh, you have. I have. I'm I'll, not that techie. So. I will link to it below <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet. You just figure out who you resonate with the most. Yeah. What color they are. Yeah. Like there are some archangels that I call on at different times that I don't normally deal with. Yeah. Um. And I will call on them sometimes when they come to mind, but there are some that I just resonate more with, that I work more closely with, and that I think, I don't know that they were necessarily assigned to me in this lifetime, but I think maybe they were. Like mm-hmm. Metatron, Michael, I think in some I readings can, you've I done for... That. I think in some readings you did for me, or maybe it was Emma, but I think it was you, where you were talking about how, like, Michael works closely with you, Metatron works closely with you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, the yeah. archangels, they are there for you. They have your back. They will slash their fiery sword yes. through everything. They will, like, there have been so many times where I am just battling stuff, and they just appear and they spread their wings, and they, like, take a battle stance, and they yeah. guard. They yeah. protect the archangels. Now, what I was just told to convey to you guys, I just got this message. As she was talking was that a lot of times, not just adults, but your little ones will see the archangels. but They see them as a pillar of light. Yes. So if they're ever talking about a pillar of light or, like, a big wall of light, they're probably seeing an archangel. And that's so special. They, they're they amazing. They're so beautiful. And angels in general, just form relationships with your angels. Oh, yeah. So important. Mm-hmm. Number three, you want to help your little ones to stay grounded and in touch with their true nature. Yes. One of our favorite things is going hiking, going outside, exploring forests, yeah. trails, because it is such a helpful and special thing, not only for the kids, but for you. Like, as a parent, getting out there and connecting. Yeah, just a human. Get connected yeah. with nature and staying grounded. Yeah. So important. And spiritual people often, um, they will notice that, like, they feel connected to Mother Earth, like to Gaia, oh, yeah. like we have such a special connection with her and little spiritual babies, mm-hmm. of course, like they see the wonder, feeding that wonder within them and yeah. all the little random rocks that they find, all the little stones, the twigs, the flowers. One of my favorite pictures is when Freya, how old was she, like a year and a half, two years old, and it's a picture Robbie took of you teaching her how to hug a tree. Oh, yep. (laughs) I love it. I'm going to see if I can find that picture, and I'm going to put it in here. Yeah, we were at the Botanic Garden in Morgantown, West Virginia. If you, anybody in West Virginia watches this, go there. Shout out, hey. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's beautiful. But you were teaching her how to appreciate nature, and that the trees are our friends, and that everything has energy, and just give it a big hug. Show it some love. We sure did. Now, the important thing about this is that children, especially in this particular day and age, are not naturally going to seek being grounded and playing outside and things like that. They're all into technology and screen time and things like that. So did you find that it's important to, like, limit screen time as much as you can and things like that? Oh, definitely. (laughs) Yeah, it's like it, it is a slippery slope, man. It really is, and that's because not all, like, okay, psychic viruses are a real thing. So, like, your kids, you it may seem like it's something totally innocent, but yet everything that is out there today can affect them. And, like, Freya, when she was little and she would watch a lot of TV or, like, um, certain things, she would have such behavior problems, and yeah, you take that away, and... 
that was that was kind of what made me start just being like, okay, we're going to go explore. We're not really going to watch TV yeah. because I would notice when she wouldn't watch TV or be exposed to like... She would do better. Yeah. Her behavior and everything like that would be more... I don't want to say normal because what is normal? I mean, yeah. normal doesn't really exist, but it would be more childlike like that innocence that little babies have where they're happy and they're excited instead of you want to help them to stay in touch with their true nature which if they're a spiritually gifted or a sensitive little kid then their true nature is with that wonder and the love and nature and all those things and so you want to one of the things I had trouble with when my kids were little still being like I said enmeshed in that other community the other belief system is that it was very very strongly encouraged you know like spare the rod spoil the child your children need to look act behave a certain way if your kids have a dirty face that means you're a bad mother I mean the the judgment the level of judgment put on not just women and children but people is insane and if you're from that you know like if you know you know And so it was very important for my home to look a certain way, my children to look a certain way, my children to act a certain way, for them to listen to certain kinds of music and not others. And all of this legalistic stuff that does not matter. And it did not foster their gifts and them staying in touch with their true nature and them keeping their vibes up. And all of those things that I know now, I did the opposite because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. But when you know better, you do better. So let us help you figure that out. Yeah, we're just wild. Like we, yeah, <laughs> yeah let kids, these let these babies be wild. We you go know. barefoot. Yeah, we're running free and you know let them wear what they want to wear. Sometimes oh, yeah. when <laughs> sometimes when your little ones come in the door, I'm like, holy cow, what are they wearing? But you know what? Who cares? Who cares if they ate something and have stuff on their face for a little while? Who cares if they come in wearing several different patterns? You know what? Do you feel pretty, little one? Then yes, you picked the right outfit. You know, let them be magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I am the mom who, when Freya was three, I dyed her hair with Kool-Aid because (laughs) she wanted it. And the Kool-Aid ruined her hair. So if you are watching this, please don't do Arctic that. Arctic Fox, okay. vegan hair dye that washes out. Do the she had the cutest little curls. They had to come off because the Kool-Aid just it stained her hair and ruined it. Do not do that to your babies. Yeah, find a nice vegan hair dye. But your intent was out. good. Yes, and she really wanted pink hair, and I was like, you know what? We're gonna do it. So we the did intent it. was to let her explore. Her creativity and tap into that magical creative side and her little wild side, right? So that's that's important. Because my girls are just like all the women in my family, (laughs) and they are stubborn. They are strong-willed. They have a temper. They will tell you Mm. what they think. And I... It's like, you're going to catch these magic hands. (laughs) (laughs) Building sense of self. Like, I want them to just do whatever they want and to always have the courage like you you go like you just do whatever your little wild yeah. heart desires it doesn't like you wear whatever you want to wear you be you yeah. because they're just magical do you know what actually started opening my mind to that concept what? before i know everything i know now when my cousin michelle who i'm very close to we're more like sisters than cousins she has a son named richard And this is when my grandma was still alive. And you guys all know how I feel about my grandma. Just talking about her, I want to cry. She's with all of us. She is. She's right here. But anyway, so Richard was 16 years old and he wanted to get a tattoo. And I guess at the age of 16, as long as your parents consented, you were allowed to do it. Well... Michelle, his mom, was struggling with this. She did not want him. She's like, how inappropriate. That's going to make me look like a bad mom. What kind of a mom does this? And shockingly enough, my grandma, who was in her 90s at the time, said, why in the world not? Let him do it. In two years, he's just going to do it anyways. But instead, you could have this moment to foster that that spark in him and the trust and he's going to think you're a cool mom and you're going to make him feel proud among his friends like 
this could be a really good opportunity to do something amazing for him. And if not, he's just going to think, man, mom made me miss out. Mom's not cool. I can't trust mom. And in two years, he's going to do it anyways. What's it going to hurt his life in the big scheme of things if you let him get that tattoo now instead of in two years? And so she let him get it. And he just, I think it was a really good thing. But my grandma saying that opened my mind to maybe I don't have to follow all the rules that this community has set for me. Maybe it is okay to let my kids explore a little bit. That's when I let you start dyeing your hair a couple times as a teenager. <laughs> Ruined my bathroom, but that's beside the point. <laughs> it was fun, though. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The first time I did purple, red, and blonde. Like, you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so the main point of this is let these babies explore. Yeah. Keep them grounded. Keep them in nature. Keep them in touch with their their true nature. Their spirits okay. are so much bigger than the little body. Yeah. And getting them in touch with yeah. Gaia just feeds that. Number four, teach these babies to meditate. And you know how I feel about this. It is so important. And the fact that most adults don't even know to meditate blows my mind. It's so important. So I think that teaching these kids to meditate will not only build the habits for their entire life that will benefit them, but as specifically for children with gifts and that are sensitive, teaching them how to meditate and getting those vibes as high as possible, as early as possible, can head off a lot of the scary things or uncomfortable things that they might face down the road, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Freya has just kind of always naturally known how to meditate. Like, my my girls, my girls are just, they're... They came in knowing. It, like they came in this way. I, yeah, they're amazing. They came to teach us. And see, we are also, when it comes to school, life, spirituality, you are your child's biggest teacher. Mm-hmm. And Frey Frey would watch me meditate too. And I remember one time we were getting out of my car when she was just two years old. And she ran up underneath my neighbor's peach tree. And she sat there, and she put her little mood dress There's pictures up. of that. Yeah, and she she called it her ohms. Like I'm going to do say, my ohms. Yeah, it was the cutest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and see, okay, when I first started diving into stuff, when I was 17, I could never sleep. I, I still struggle with sleeping, such an insomniac. I would meditate. And when I'd get, like, 20 minutes into it, when, like, my gifts and everything, my senses would start opening, I felt like a switch would flip. And, um, eyes. Creepy eyes. Because you can tell the difference. Creepy eyes would just be staring at me <laughs> from in the window, like, what They're you like, doing? What you doing? You seeping? Yeah, but it was so <laughs> creepy. Except it wasn't that pleasant. <laughs> it was so scary. Here's the way that I think about it, is that I was just telling someone about this last night. I was saying that... Most kids don't start think or learning about the concept of meditation until they are a teenager. The problem is that when you're dealing with teenagers, you're talking about hormones and rebellion and depression and anxiety. And teenagers are angsty. Like once they start to hit around puberty, they go into the fog. And you're going to see them again in about a decade. Like that whole period is just low vibe and angsty. So trying to learn about meditation then and getting your vibes up is hard, don't you think? Whereas if we teach them to start meditating when they're little and instill that tool in them to teach them that they are in charge of their vibrations and how high they are, by the time they get to uh, teenage years, maybe they maybe they won't struggle as bad. You know what I mean? Maybe they, it will be so instilled in them by that point in time that it will be easy for them to draw on that tool Mm -hmm. when they need it. Yeah. Like the little seeds you plant, which I don't even know if she remembers this at all, but it was maybe like 2007, 2008. She took me into her office and she was like, this is my little meditation space. And she... I don't even remember that. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, she doesn't even remember the... my the, Her office was my sister's old bedroom and it had a closet. And on one side, she had a mirror and then this little, like, t- plastic tote that has drawers in it. And she set up candles 
and she was like, yeah, this is where, this is my little meditation space. And How funny. Yeah, like, I can't I believe... vaguely remember that now, but I, I don't even remember that. What's funny is that it looked like Spirit was planting the seed before it actually took root. That's what I'm saying. About and five years later. Yeah, because when I was a teenager... I was so surprised that nobody knew about meditation because I was like, but this is something my mom talked about when I was like seven, like when I was a little tiny kid, like she had no idea that that little, that little tiny seed that she vaguely even remembers was planted. And then when I was like 17 and I was in the throes of all kinds of stuff, um, that was... That came back to me. Like, when I was a teenager, it was so odd to me that people had never heard of meditation or that it just it didn't, like, register as something that was well-known when it was something that she had exposed me to at such a young age. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and it, you have no idea what little tiny seeds that you have that you plant in your kid's head, yeah. the impact that you'll have on them or anything. Like, kids learn best from watching you. Oh, yeah. In the example that you set. Yeah. You are modeling that behavior all the time. So if you want your kids to meditate, you should be meditating too. Definitely. Yep. Number five, teach them about crystals and how crystals can help them. Yes. We love crystals in this family. They are our thing. (laughs) Um, And there are a few along my journey that I think are foolproof in that if you need, like they're just, it's amazing little blend and especially for kids, selenite, black Mm -hmm. tourmaline, labradorite, and then whatever their birthstone is. Mm -hmm. Like, um, birthstones, people may just think kind of like blah, blah, blah about, however, for little kids, especially even adults, spiritually gifted people, our birthstones help provide a sense of self that protects us in a way that other stones can't, even when they're protective stones. And any black crystal, shungai, onyx, jet, obsidian, any black stone is good. I've just discovered that black tourmaline is one of the strongest black stones. Every stone works different for every person. I've just noticed that tourmaline, any of the tourmalines even, um, they just, they're they're very powerful and they pack Chicken. a punch. So how can you teach kids to use crystals or what should you teach them about them or how to use them to help them with their daily life or their spiritual growth? Well, first off, any crystal that ends in ite, keep away from water. Yeah. I-T-E, like kyanite, <clears throat> selenite. Yeah. All the ite crystals. Don't put them in water. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I tried to charge my selenite, put it in a bowl of water, and I was like... <laughs> If you can't wrap the crystal or if it's just like on its own, putting them in your pockets, I do that like I do that all the time. Um, and we all do. Stuff yeah. them in your bra, put them in your pockets. But if you're a little kid, you should try to get it wrapped or hang it around your neck on a necklace or maybe put it on Definitely. a little bracelet. Non-dominant hand, right? Yes. It, if you hold them in your receiving hand in times of need, it just... I mean, you receive the energy either way, but just non-dominant hand is your receiving hand that you receive the energy from source way easier. Um, So that's a good little tidbit for them to know. Sleeping with them under your pillow Mm -hmm. can help with dreams. Even an adult, even as an adult, you can do that too. Like these are tips for everybody. Put them on the nightstand, put them under your pillow. Just start teaching them that these are tools that can help them. Start loading up their tool belt that they can access for the rest of their lives. Yes, um, labradorite is a very good stone for more psychic people. It helps enhance those abilities. Uh, it's one of my favorites. And selenite, it's amazing. Selenite, it's so amazing. It's amazing. Just... Now, someone had commented in the uh, um, a video of mine, and I don't remember which one, but somebody had commented recently asking, because I had mentioned smudging with sel- selenite or cleansing your space with selenite. And they're like, I didn't know you could do that. And I'm like, yes, my daughter like uses yeah. the wand and like cleanses everything. It's so amazing. Oh, I have huge wands of it. They're like this big. I keep them in my car. Selenite tends to cleanse anything that it's around. Yes, it is and one so of the best stones. Put that on their nightstand. Put that in their room. It'll help keep the energy in their room purified. Purified. Yeah, if you, there's one stone we could talk you into getting or having in your arsenal at all times, selenite is the one that can just 
it's like the end all be all <laughs> honestly like it does everything for you it's awesome number six i kind of touched on this one a little bit in number three but it's give them lots of creative outlets this is so important yeah. when we were growing up um I didn't really have much, like middle child syndrome. Um, I didn't have many creative <laughs> outlets. But we were always doing something. Like, I was very yeah, crafty. We she, always had stuff there, but I don't know that you guys took a lot of advantage of it. We didn't do anything formal and organized. Like, right now, as part of Freya's homeschool, she gets to go to art classes so and cool. things like that. We didn't do anything organized like that, which I kind of regret, but I was doing the best I can. But... She did do a lot. Like, she was very crafty. She still is. Um, and that wasn't a slight against you or anything. <laughs> I'm just saying that. No, it's um, okay. For them to have their own little niche, like, yeah. whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be, like, artwork. It can be horseback riding, motocross, yeah. archery. Like, get your little one to try as many things as they can, as many things that yeah. interest them. And then when, like, <clears throat> like I could cry. Yeah. Like, it. It evokes a lot of emotion in me. Well, you know, that creativity, it's all from the sacral chakra and from the divine feminine, and that just helps them to tap into that. Yep. And um, so many adults, human adults, have issues with their sacral chakra because there's just been a blockage between the root chakra, that, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like helping them to tap into that creativity when they're younger helps so much. And um, the other thing that I noticed was that, like, first of all, encourage them to draw as much as possible. What I noticed is that Freya will often communicate the things that she sees, experiences, has dreams about, whatever, in her drawings. Yep. And she'll be like, this is the guy I, dr I dreamed about that I was telling you that was scary and he looked like a wizard and he had these teeth and, you know, all the things that she experiences and that she needs to process and get out and communicate to you. Sometimes they do that way better through drawings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's getting so good at it. I love it. Like, she's becoming an amazing little artist. And yeah. I'm going to insert a picture here of her in front of her art school. She was so impressed that it was such a big building. She said it's a big building like a museum. Is that what she said? Mm -hmm. So Anella took a picture of her in front of the art school. And she's this tiny, itty-bitty, little, little bitty in front of this great big building and she's so cute but mm -hmm. she's so proud to be going to that and it's so good for her mm -hmm. so yes foster creativity in your little ones it will help them so much so that about wraps up this video i hope that this helped you guys and gave you some food for thought when dealing with your uh, gifted children or your little sensitive grandchildren you know a lot of their needs are very similar to adults that Definitely. are going through the spiritual awakening but um, you just have to frame it a little bit different and instead of them navigating it on their own as an adult would it's your job to help them figure this out and to set the tone in your home and we're going to be doing more videos talking about all of this. But like I said before, if you have any advice or anything to add, if you have any questions or specific issues you've been facing, any of that, please put it in the comments below or send me a message. You all know how to contact me. You contact me all the time and I love getting your messages. But please send me a message or leave it in the comments. If you think anyone would benefit from getting this video that you don't think would normally see it, please send it to them because... We're working to help these little star seeds that are coming in that need need to know how to foster yeah. this in a healthy way. So help us to change the world and make it better. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys. Until next time.